I go for refuge and am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Sangye Juda Zoge Jonam Nage Jin Zoge Bet Sonam Get Ola Benjir Sangye Jubare Shu Sangye Juda Zoge Chonam Loi Chanju Pardo Dani Yasu Nage Jin Zoge Bet Sonam Get Ola Benjir Sangye Jubare Shu Sanye Juda Zoge Chonam La Chanju Bardo Tane Gelsuch Nage Jin Zoge Be Sonam Ge Drola Penje Sanye Jubarai Shu Om Ye Dara Ma He To Prabhava He To Mte Sham Data Gato Yevatat Desham chayo niroda evam vati mahashramanaya svaha Om ye dharam tu prabhavam he tum desham datha gato hyavatat Desham chayo niroda evam vati mahashramanaya svaha Om ye dharma he tu prabhavam he tum desham datha gato hyavatat Desham chayo niroda Evam Vati Mahashramana Yesvaha All phenomena are from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The decision causes as well as taught by the great seer. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> I think we are on page number 67 and paragraph number 3. How is it not discontinuous? Um, discontinuous meaning gap between the cause and the, the effect. How is it not discontinuous? It is not discontinuous because a sprout is not born from a seed that is already seized. Already seized meaning a seed has seized. Seized meaning there's no seed. And then there's a gap. And then the sprout comes into being. It is not true. How is it not discontinuous? It is not discontinuous because a sprout is not born from a seed that is already seized, nor from a seed that is not yet seized, means together. That's also not true. Rather, like the beam of a scale, um, tilting, um, tilting from up to down, a sprout is born precisely when the seed has seized. Okay. So the um, this is what the Bichangla said like the say the the two actions are together simultaneous but the two actors are not simultaneous you're getting it and uh, what you find this is very clearly um, indicated or taught by acharya dharmagirdi eventually i would say that all of us we must study acharya dharmagirdi's text on emptiness the text is um madhyamaka avatara entry into the middle way in tibetan umajupa Umarjupa, Madhyamaka Avatara, or entry into the middle way, and Tibetan Umarjupa. <clears throat> this is extremely important text. We have to study that. And what I would say is this suggests is that we have a set of belief system. So since our birth, we have some set of belief system, and the um, which we are not actually aware of the other within us and at times these studies will help us to come out of these belief systems come out of these belief systems 
Meanwhile, I would say that that say the say uh, people who come up with you come to discover many of the innate belief systems. Innate the belief system means the thought processes. Innate thought processes which may not tell you with the reality. And some we learn from the environment, from the environment, which may which may not also tell you with the reality. For example, like you know, with myself, I give you the example. Say that. So I, was, I used to be confused as a little boy, young age, like 13, 14, 15. There, wow, that, how come? That, that, we get lots of blessings from all these teachers, gurus, lamas, and then the, the students. For, them, for the students, what they're expecting, that they should perform well in the exams, but they never score, but it, they never put themselves in the merit list in those days. The, the merit list, there's what is known as a merit list under CBSE, Central Board of Secondary Education, in the, the government. Merit list. Depends, never come down the merit list. Um, yet we get all the blessings. People who have no blessings, they come on the merit list. Right? So this is what I used to So what is a blessing? <laughs> this is my question as a little boy. Right? Okay. So the um, so there are many things the which we have for some innate beliefs. And the, in a way, it doesn't mean that the, say, for example, Tibetans or any group, any group, they're inferior, others in experience, the, the superior. No, this is not a connotation. It's only about the opportunities. To be very honest, it's opportunities. For example, in India, generally speaking, no, not individuals. Individuals can be very different. A genius can be born in a very poor family. A genius can be born in a very poor family. But overall speaking, we see that people who whose parents are educated, who are in an urban area, urban place, cities, and with the educated the families, good environment, these students, they shine in the exams, generally speaking. But they, they also become good in smoking, drinking, and all these things. Right, so what I'm saying, both sides are there, negative, positive sides are there. It's all matter. In other words, what I'm saying is, is deep inside, we're all the same. Whether you're born in, a, let's say, privileged family or um, the say, humble family, deep inside, we all have the same potential. This is reality. A genius can be born in anywhere. It's not that genius is born only in the privileged the families. It can be born in a very the, the humble family. A reality, this a reality. And so what I'm saying is that the then the opportunities. So the opportunities don't I would say that let's also not blame to your family, blame your family, blame your environment. Oh, I'm born in such a horrible place, no opportunities. No, create opportunities. So when you are young, when you're in school, you can't do anything. It's whatever your parents give give to you, that's it. But then once you enter college, create opportunities. There are so many opportunities there. Particularly in today's era, 20th, 21st century, there's so much. How you, this is. So wherever you're born, so generally speaking, not all, generally speaking, we can create our own opportunities. Because it's amazing. If you're born like 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, then we are born in a humble family. You have to remain humble. Family, there's no possibility for you to, you know, they say no democracy, nothing. You're born in a humble family, you're a humble family. You're a shepherd, you're born in a shepherd family, you, you are a shepherd. That's decided. But today is a very different time. We have to take the grab the opportunities. Particularly, I personally feel that, say, the say, the moment you put effort, when you become more independent. When you become more independent, you put effort. That is the time. That is a that is a time of your greatest growth. Even the intelligent people in the school, shaped by the school, shaped by school, some shine. For example, like no doubt, I can see that this the, the doctor from childhood shaped by school, and she is very intelligent. You know, automatically shaped. Now others like us. Who may not have this, you know, the high level of IQ, whatever. So those, when you come out of the school, when you're in the college, when you can do anything you like, 
at that point, if you don't, instead of wasting your time, if you to put effort in the growth, for example, like many of you young people here, you know, the, the one Sikh Gishila brought, Flat and Dharma, say, for example, you choose to come here, instead you can do anything. You can do anything else. You can roam around, go to Goa, beach, you know, and then sometimes to, to nightclubs. You can do anything. But you chose to come here. So what I'm saying is that if you take the opportunity, grab the opportunity, this is a time where the growth is maximum. Your growth is amazing. And the, in my life, I've seen that. People who otherwise I would call, the people may call as less IQ. But when they put effort, exert effort at that phase, not in the school. School days is like, you know, you're intelligent, you shine. You're not so intelligent, you don't shine. But after the school days, where it's totally your initiative, your will, this is a point where people really shine. Even though your the so-called IQ is less, but your IQ can, in, even your IQ can increase, right? That's amazing. So this is a phase. This is a phase of a life where we, if we put effort, we can really make a difference in our life. Okay. So with this in mind, we read the text. <clears throat> How is it not discontinuous? It is, it is not discontinuous because a sprout is not for, born from a seed that is already seized, nor from a seed that is not yet seized. Rather, like the beam of a scale tilting up and down, a sprout is born precisely when the seed has seized. In other words, say the cause and effect. What's the relation with the cause and effect is that the effect arising, act of arising, and the, the, the seed, the cause, act of seizing. These two actions are simultaneous. And the two actors, these two are not simultaneous. Okay, so Acharya Chandrakriti, in his text, it is, he explained in great detail. You're getting it? So therefore, I would say, I would highly recommend you to study Acharya Chandrakriti's text. You must study that. And the same, at times you may think that, say the, oh, what is taught there and what is my thinking, these two are a little different. They're going different ways. You may not accept it. It's not that you have to accept it. Whatever you study, you have to accept it. Not, not necessary. Just study this, widen your horizon of knowledge. That is so important. Widen the horizon of knowledge. For example, I personally say that the, the say, I read Western philosophy. Just since, like, say, the first time I read Western philosophy was when I went to Cambridge in England in 2003. 2003, many, when many of you are not born yet. Not born? Not born. Ajiji not born? Okay, so the many of you are not born. Ajiji not born, this girl not born. Yeah, Peter not born. Yeah, many of you not born. So what I'm saying is that the for the first time I read the, the point is that I read the Western philosophy. The first one is David Hume, his book. I read it and I was amazed. I was amazed. <clears throat> I was amazed. So first, what I would say is that one thing that we do is that we learn one philosophical system thoroughly. Particularly, I would say that Nalanda tradition, that is where the rigorous discussion is happening. A rigorous discussion with open-ended discussions. The, among the four different schools, one rejecting the other, the study is very thoroughly. And then you read any other philosophy. It's amazing. I, I read the David Hume. I was so impressed that the two truths which I consider as extremely important in Prasangika philosophy. So when I read the David Hume test, he was not saying two truths, but what he was explaining is coming to these two directions. I was so impressed. Is so beautiful. The, the thoughts are so, there's a clarity in his thoughts. So what I'm saying is that the maintaining an open mind to broaden, the, the fun the point is that broaden your intelligence, broaden your knowledge, broaden your awareness. It doesn't matter what tradition, just learn all the traditions. Don't mix them up. Don't mix them up. First, keep them distinct. Learn them distinct. Keep them distinct because if you mix up right from the beginning, then you will never get the original taste. It is like kijri. Kijri. What? Kijri. Even your sound, you have these braces, so you cannot pronounce it well. Ajiri, how do you pronounce it? 
fijery, yeah. So it is a mix, you know, food mix. You not taste the original taste of what is rice, what is dal, what is the brinjal. You not separate. So, taste them separately. You know the taste so well. Then you can mix them up, mix them up, and see where which matches with which, which they goes parallel, which goes divergent. So that way your knowledge will be broadened. That's amazing. <clears throat> okay. The next <clears throat> is how. How does it not involve transmigration? What is transmigration? It says not involve transmigration. See, transmigration, um, somebody dies and then we move to the next life. Say, Buddhism, does it, does Buddhism accept it or not? Somebody dies and take birth next life. But then it says it doesn't involve transmigration. Uh, so they say, Transmigration, let's say that the okay, Pizzoli, from where did you come from? From where did you come to Deer Park? From Delhi. So, from Delhi, one person known as Tenzin Pizzoli come to Deer Park from one place to another place. He transmigrated to Delhi. You're getting it? So we don't use the word transmigration in that sense. Transmigration is moving from one life to the next life. You're getting it? One life to the next life. But the Pinzole, you came from Delhi how many days ago? Four days ago, less than four days ago. So when you so that Pinzole who start from Delhi and Pinzole today, who's older? Two days older. How many days older? Four days older. Five days older. Okay. So which means that the Pinzole who started from Delhi was four days younger than today's Pinzole. Each one of us, we are four days younger than when we started from your place. You agree? Four days younger. Now, four days older. So this was not same. One is younger, one is older. This was not same. But we say that I came from there. You don't say that, no, I just randomly came here. I, I just randomly appeared here. No, you came from somewhere. There's a, there's a the continuum there. But if you check the continuum, you see that the first who started and now the today, these two are not exactly the same. The one was four, year, four days older, four days younger, and now four days older. This is it. But conventionally speaking, we say that, yes, I came from Delhi. I was there in Delhi four days ago. That's also correct. So with this in mind, the transmigration here means that somebody from Delhi, let's say 21, uh, 20, okay, let's say 21 years old and for 21 years and one four days old person that moved to Deer Park after four days is the same age, just jumped. No. So it's, these two are two different people. But we say there's a continuum. You agree? There's a continuum. You say that I came from Delhi. Now after the retreat, I plan to go to Delhi back. I plan to go to Singapore. So this is what it is. Okay. So with transmigration here, meaning that as well like you jump from one place to the next place, where it's the same identical person jumping from one place to the next person. There's no identical person. The moment it's a cause effect, these two are different. But not different in the same sense of two different, I say the continuum. It's the same continuum. Okay. <clears throat> How does it not involve transmigration? It does not involve transmigration because the sprout and the seed are different. You're getting it? For the you four days ago and you four days later, these two are different. Like the sprout and the seed, they are different. That which is sprout is not the seed. How does it entail the formation of a large result from a small cause, a large fruit? forms from planting a small seed. Therefore, it entails a formation large result from a small cause. So in fact, when we do, oh yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. Don't just follow like this. Everything, for example, like same, the, the cause is not permanent, which means that cause is changing. Cause is changing, and the, it's not discontinuous. So the cause and the effect, there's, there's a continuum there. The effect must come from the, the cause, which shares the same continuum. 
we cannot expect let's say the I want mango I want to enjoy mangoes and you plant apple seed. These two don't share the continuum. Right? So you have to resort to the cause which is which has the same continuum, which is a, which is concomitant with the result they are expecting. Okay. Then the uh, last the fruit forms precisely according to the type of the seed planted, the con concomitancy of the cause and effect. In other words, the the result must come from the cause which has the potentiality to give rise to the result. Let me repeat it. So concomitancy, the cause and effect meaning, it means that the result must come from what uh, must come from the cause which has the potential to give rise to the result. Like, say if you want the mangoes, don't plant apple seeds. Apple seeds will not give rise to mangoes. So it must mango mango tree must come from the seed which is a mango seed which has a potential to give rise to mango mango fruit. Okay. Lastly, fruit comes, fruit forms precisely according to the type of seed planted. Therefore, it involves a continuity of similar time. Thus, is outer dependent arising to be seen in terms of five aspects. So, what are the five aspects? So, the first one, the cause not being permanent, not discontinuous, no transmigration. Small cause giving rise to a large results, and the concomitance of the continuity of the effects giving rise to by the cause which is of the same type as the effect. Okay, so this five, if possible, say one. Well, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Instead of that, what we can do is that yes, we know that when you go back, when you're on your own or in the, the you know group discussion, say without looking at the, see if you can bring these five points, say the, by, by heart, by heart. And then once these po five points are brought, brought out, then see if you can explain each other, explain these five points and see if you can put through questions like discontinuous, so not discontinuous, what do you mean by that? And then, like the no transmigration, so the the say Buddha doesn't believe in the transmigration, rebirth not accepted. So why, why what is this? You can discuss on all these things. Okay, transmigration. Why it says there's no transmigration? What is this? Anyone? That's not. It doesn't involve transmigration. What do you mean by that? Okay, how many the answer? How many you have the answer? Is hence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, Dorjile. Yes, now it's working. But yes, because Gishila, I think that uh, you said it earlier that uh, what you uh, compare with two things are totally different. That's the why. Cause and effect. Yeah. These two are different. These different. are not identical. So not if the cause becomes the effect and if these two are identical, this is the transmigration meant here in this context. So where, where is this not possible? So therefore, the Buddha, it is said, it does not involve transmigration. Okay, how many agree with Dorji Libra's hands? Okay, if you agree with this, then what is the transmigration then? If you accept transmigration, what is transmigration? Rebirth. How to explain this? What is happening? What is happening in the you know what is rebirth? I'm asking I'm not asking you prove rebirth. I'm not this is a very complicated topic. Prove rebirth is very complicated. So what is rebirth? Okay, Jimela. Mind mind travel in like a different body like a new body. The mind travels from one body to another body. body and then connects to the the, the another the new next, one yeah. another body. Very good. And uh, okay, stuff from from my understanding, if there is no transmigration, then there has to be some vehicle that carries one mind from the one body to the other when it dies. Okay, say it again. If there's no transmigration, if there's no transmigration. It's not like the mind is teleporting to another body. There's some sort of 
vehicle for it that would be complicit in this cause and effect independent origination in another body? No, just explain directly what is transmigration, what is rebirth. <clears throat> would you accept? If you don't accept, that's a different story. You're getting it? Say, for example, say the uh, I don't believe in reciting mandra. You listen carefully. Full full sentence. You're getting it. Just pick a don't just pick a half of the sentence. I don't believe in mantra. Doesn't mean I don't believe in it. You're getting. I don't believe in reciting mantra recitation for you to become a Nobel or in physics. Full sentence. Do you understand what I say? Uh -huh. I said, I don't believe in mantra recitation for you to become a Nobel laureate in physics. If you become a Nobel in physics, you have to study physics. Don't keep reciting mantra. You're getting it? Even if you recite mantra for like 40 years, but 50 years, you will never become a Nobel laureate in physics. If you really want to become a Nobel in physics, the concomitant cost is study physics. You're getting it? Study physics and the result mantra. This is not common, common, common to cause of become a Nobel in physics. Mm. You're getting it. So, the if somebody says that result mantra, if you want to become a Nobel in physics, then I love I'm listening to the person. And did I did I did I hear what the person said? Yes, I've learned what the person said. What did the person say? The person said, Recite the mantra and you'll become a Nobel in physics, which I don't agree. But I should be able to, that what I understood what the other person is saying. I agree, not agree, that's a different story. Likewise, what is rebirth? This question. Be very direct. If it, uh, don't say it in the negative sense. Negative meaning, if the rebirth doesn't exist, then so, 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 so. Instead of that, rebirth is like this. Be very, in a state, make the statement in an affirmative point of view. What is rebirth? Stuff. Uh, rebirth, as far as I understand, is the um, it just I'm not sure I can explain it in terms of transmigration. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't just matter. in your own words. Uh, the, what what, the what do you understand by rebirth? The transference of karmic imprints from one body at ceasing to the uh, to another body at birth. Transmigration of a karmic imprints. Okay, karmic imprints. What is karmic imprints? Uh, karmic imprints. Can you explain it? I can try. Uh, karmic imprints is the are, are um, causes that haven't ripened yet. That are. Um, okay. Anyone? What is karmic imprints? Can you explain it? The stuff brought a very brought a very interesting point. What is karmic imprint? We take for granted. What is karmic imprint? Anyone? Okay. Tinsi Shila. Angeshela, uh, I think karmic imprints are the tendencies that we are uh, carrying uh, from the actions that we do. In so where is it? Is it my shoulder or my arms or my hands or where? In our mental continuum. In the mental continuum. So karmic imprints are the, say, the tendencies which your mind has as the mind travels then this tendency will go with it. Okay, what is this tendency like? Tendency known as the coming imprints or coming seeds. What is that like? How do you explain it? Anyone? So the Dinsi uh, Shila explained it well, saying that it's a mental tendency, the, the tendencies of the mind. So now how do you relate the tendency with the mind? How? So like, how? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, no one. Yes. Kate? Okay, yes, Kate here. Mike, Mike. Mike, Mike. The tendencies are our habits that were acquired during some previous lifetimes, that we indulge into something. Or do positive repetitive, things. positive, both negative um, things over and over again. And there is a potential for this to arise in the future lifetimes. The sa same negative or positive tendencies. So the your mind has it. Yes. So um, the, um, what is the relationship like? The, the mind, for example, let's say that 
this mug, this mug, this glass, this glass has a juice. So it is like the the the, the glass as the container, and let's say the tendencies that my mind has, the juice that this glass has. You're getting it? The juice the glass has, the tendencies that my my mind has. Same the say the so the juice and you remove the juice and the glass is left and the juice is separate. So likewise tendencies can be separate from the, the mind or what's the relationship? They can be separated from the mind. Okay, so the they can be separated. Oops. They can be removed from the mind. Or they, they can be removed. They can be removed. So people are watching my tendencies, whether he react impulsively or <laughs> right, you are checking my tendencies. <laughs> How many did you sense? How he's reacting to this? He's becoming panicky. <laughs> right? Okay, some of you are checking, I know. Okay. Indra is you checking. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Indrajit ji is very, very kind, very generous. Okay. Others are saying, checking, because some people, they become very panicky. Right? Like this and never find how to stop it. Right? Okay. So the, um, the, um, Kedla is saying that the tendencies can be removed. Bad tendencies can be removed. But the tendencies, can they be separate like this? The juice here and the glass here, the tendencies here and the mind here. Okay, this is very important. The concept of ten this is so important. In Tibetan, this is known as Pakcha. Pakcha. How do you explain the Pakcha? This is so important. Okay. Um, who? Okay, here. Tenzi Insela Benda. Uh, the tendencies cannot be separated from the mind, like the tendencies are here and the mind is there. It is more like the bowl, the singing bowl, and the dance on the bowl. Yeah. Okay, the singing bowl and the dance created on the singing bowl say that do you, would you, how would you say that, say there are several containers? And some you can say that, oh, this container must be used for the last maybe three, four, five generations. How can you make that out? Yes. Uh, appearance. So like what? What's the difference in appearance? Which you can say that, oh, this must be used for many years. And some is very new. How do you make the difference? As scratches and dents. Right? You hit with a hammer, what happens? It'll have a mark. The dent is created. You're getting it? So the dent, is it different from the singing ball? It's not different from the singing ball. You're getting where the singing ball travels, the dent also travels. You're getting it? For example, if I say... From the... from. The, uh, the the mouth of this, if I break a small piece, where this where this glass travels, the bro that the the broken piece, the, the what, the broken part, it also travels with it. Yes, and if the say the 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 uh, the uh, what the metal mug, you hit with the hammer, what happens? It bends. Or the technical term is a dent is formed. A dent is formed. So where the mug travels, the dent also travels. So how to fix the dent? Hey Jimela, huh? You hit it from the inside, opposite direction. You hit it from the inside, right? So outside, what hits negative? For example, say the negative dents, negative karmas. What hits? Negative karma hits and then the dent is created, negative imprint is created, right? So negative karma, 
who made the negative karma to hit this is the self-grasping ignorance. So what's the opposite of self-grasping ignorance? Wisdom of emptiness. So from inside the wisdom of emptiness you hit, then the dent is fixed. Negative karma is purified. You're getting it? Okay, this is very important. The concept that we need to know. Because that the concept of karma, the concept of tendencies, imprints, karmic imprints is so commonly being, you can hear them so commonly. But what exactly is the mechanism? This is something that we need to know. Yes, Dinla. Gishla, with the analogy of uh, ball and the dens of it, I understand the relationship between mental tendencies and mind. But what actually is mental tendency, I st I'm still not clear. Okay. My question to you. Oh, so what's the question? Did you all follow the question? Yes, yes. What, ex what exactly is the mental tendencies? Okay. Say the ball, you hit it with the hammer and the dent is formed. What exactly is dent? Can you see the dent? If you hit it with the... Yes. It's dent. What exactly is the dent? The mug is not the dent. What is the dent? Anyone? Like metaphorically, the karma? Not metaphorically, the, 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 dent. the real mug. Okay, real what mug is the dent. The shape. The dent. distorted shape. shape. The distortion that you create on the mug by hitting the hitting the hitting the hammer is known as the dent. Mm -hmm. Likewise, your mind is distorted. With negative karma, your mind is distorted. But the positive karma, your mind is, the dent is created, a beautiful dent is created. Do you mean to say that mind has a shape? <laughs> okay. Let's say that, say that somebody says, the, how are you, right? Okay. How would you describe the two persons? You ask, how are you to two persons? The person A says that, are you my doctor? Hey, what is that answer like? Are you my doctor? How come that you're asking my health? It's not your business. Are you my doctor? Other person says, thank you, I'm well, how are you? Which of the two person looks nice? A or B? B. Hey, oh, you're in a daze, you're thinking something. You're not listening to me. So you're asking, you're thinking of you think the next question. What next question to ask? You're getting it? You're not thinking. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Sorry. So of the two persons, of course, naturally, the second person, you will say, that, oh, this person is very decent. Mm -hmm. So this person is not the body. It's the, the, the words that come out. It's so pleasant, so nice. So what made the, the pleasant words come out? Even that person also has the capacity to say nasty words. But why the pleasant words come? Because of the nice mental thinking. So that mind... Metaphorically, that mind has some, uh, is very pleasant because the pleasant words come out of that. So we understand uh, karmic imprints by inferring by our actions of physical and verbal. Yes, of course. And you yourself can also feel that. For example, say that anybody says something, you take it very negatively. Your mind is negative. We said, oh, this person is very negative. Oh, this person is very positive. This is mental state. Yeah. And so these are the tendencies. So how do they, for example, say, oh, for example, say, from many of you, oftentimes I pick up a jirji. Why? I know that he will not give the unexpected answer. <laughs> You're getting it? He will give a good answer. You're getting it? Because I can see his mind from being together for all these many years. You're getting some people give unexpected answers. <laughs> You're getting it? So... The, what I'm saying is that the, because that words come from the dictated by the mind, and then when the mind is very pleasant, then you feel like talking. You're getting it? When the other person's mind is very pleasant, you feel like talking. You know that the person's mind is very pleasant, nice. So that there's a tendency. For example, the same, in fact, I would say that every material things, mental things, they have the tendencies. For example, say, the, uh, say this word. It falls, it's a tendency to it doesn't make sound, doesn't make music. No music. But but this has the tendency for music. It doesn't have music. It has a tendency for music. You're getting it? 
it is a tendency for pleasant sound. Pleasant sound. Here, no pleasant sound. You're getting it? So everything has a tendency. But you're good. Okay, now next. Yes, Peter. I think you still didn't answer the Which one? question from there about transmigration. What am I to give the answer or am I to give the, I ask a question? I'm not sure. I'm just saying that this question is still open. Which question? Uh, what exactly is transmigration, I think? Um, in, yeah, it was in, in the context of free birth. Wonderful. Amazing, Peter. Thank you for putting me back in the track. Okay, what exactly is transmigration? Anyone? I ask a question, right? And many people know the rules. What's the rule? <laughs> hey, Tinsi, Tinsi, Peter, listen. What's the rule? If you ask a question, don't expect the answer. <laughs> Say it again. If you shall ask any question, don't expect the answer. Yes. From Gishela, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is transmigration? What is rebirth? What is rebirth? Anyone? Quick. Yes. Gisela, I think that uh, rebirth is like a, uh, uh, any mind that creates a karma. Karma is like an energy. Uh, as says, kar uh, energy is neither destroyed nor created. So uh, if some energy is created, then that energy flows into one person. And if... Uh, no, the original saying, I, I'm confused. You say energy is not created, no, no, no destroyed. And then when energy is created... No, no, no. You said energy is not created. No just like energy. a karma, it's like an energy. Yes. So if anyone has that energy, so it just uh, passes on to another one. Okay, so that it's is... It's in the universe. It moves from the one life oh, to the next life. That's yeah. rebirth. Yeah. In other words, the, the, the person leaves... Okay, who said it? Somebody already said it. The person... Okay, here, Jamila said, the person... The person's mind leaves the previous body and connects to the next body. So carrying the, imp the karmic imprints, which you and staff both said. Okay, that is rebirth. So with this rebirth, what travels? Mind travels. The person travels or not? Person doesn't travel. Okay, that's interesting. Person doesn't, okay. A person travels, raise hands. The person travels from one life to the next life. Raise hands. Okay. Vijayana, Manla, Sunamla, three seniors, they accept it. Ajiriji, person travels or not travel? <laughs> okay, person doesn't travel. Okay. Okay. So the person doesn't take rebirth. The person takes the rebirth. The person takes rebirth. So takes rebirth meaning? Only the mind. Because the person is made of two components. Yes. Yes. The body doesn't travel. Body goes away to the respective elements. So it's only the mind which travels. Okay, listen to what Ajir just said. Say it again. The person doesn't travel, the mind travels. I have no comment. You're getting it? We just listen to what the Ajir in fact I may not agree. I will, to be very honest, I will not agree. But we have to listen to this. Don't just outrightly reject. Listen to this. And how you don't agree, or how you agree, you have to explain it during the group discussion. Okay, say it again. So what I'm saying is that when we say person the person, travel. the person, in terms of the, uh, 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 what is that? Word rebirth. We, uh, rebirth, we are talking in that context. So the rebirth is a movement from this to there. Yes. Okay, from one state to the another state. One life to the next life. Yeah, so first I would like to define what the person, yeah. this Ajay, this person, this is made of the two things, is the body and the mind. So at the time of the death, the body disappears, the elements of the body goes to the respective elements, and what is left is the mind. This mind really travels to the next body. So that is really the transmigration. So the person, conventionally what I am, it doesn't travel as such. Okay, so the, I may ask few questions for, for our 
food for thought for the group discussion. This is very more group dis- important question for discussion. Say, I say the a person A dies. A person A has a body. Say mind. I die. Okay, there's a person A dies. Okay, you should not die. No, yeah, it's you a, should live for us. That's again the law of the co- yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So a person A dies. Yeah. Person A dies, and the body is left behind. What is left behind? Whatever, however you may describe it, so the, the, the different elements. Then the mind travels, and the the next life, there's a person coming up. Yeah, person B comes. Person B and person A are these the same person, different person. They are different person. They are different B. persons. Yeah. Okay. So the, person the, B the, cannot say that. Person B cannot say that in my previous life. I say person A is a male. Person B is female. Mm-hmm. Person B cannot say that in my previous life I was a man. I was a man. Well, I think uh, can say or not say. Uh, Is it true or not? Yeah, yeah, he can say that. Is it true or not? The previous life. Person B. Yeah. Person B. Yeah. Was she a man in the previous life? He can say that. She can not say only that. say that. Is it true or not? Yeah, it's a tr- it may be true. It may not be. He may. No, be what I'm per- saying is yeah. that person A dies. Yeah. A man dies. That's right. Birth as a girl. Yeah. In fact, there are many of such cases. That's possible. Okay. So this girl, hmm. if the girl remembers hmm. through the clairvoyance, the girl will say that, oh, in my previous life, I was a man. Okay, yeah. Correct or not correct? Possible. So this girl, in the previous life, was she existent? This girl. This girl, was she existent? The this girl life? as a person in this present body and the mind stream with this imprint. My question to you is yeah. this girl, hmm. was she a man in the last life? Uh, yeah, she was a man. Okay, she was a man means she yeah. was existent in the last she life. She was existent. So this girl was in the past life? Not this girl. This, this is my question. Yeah. So this girl, I'm talking, this girl, person B, yeah. was she existent in the previous life? Uh, as, as the previous person she this was. This person, yeah. person, girl, hmm. B, girl, person hmm. B, was she existent in the, the previous life? Yes, no. Uh, if you level it. Was she, was she a man in the last life? Yeah, yes. she was a man. Okay, let's listen. She was a man. She was a man. She, she was, was a man, man means she was existent. She was existent. Okay, so which means that she was in the previous life. Uh, she was in the previous life. So the, then she disappeared in between. Mm. Disappeared or it continues? She continues. Okay, continues means? She continues. She moved. She moved. From one life to the next life. Yeah. So the person moves. Person moves. Not only the mind. I think it's only the uh, way of uh, putting it. It's only the expression. So did you all hear? Yeah. That as you just said, it, it, a mind travels, the person did not doesn't travel. Yeah. Right? Mind if, along from, with this imprints from travels. This, okay. From this discussion, we see that not only mind travels, also the person travels. You're getting it? So this is the, the these are the questions we need to be able to is there anybody who likes to do you say whose thinking tallies with a Gigi and who likes to give the answer? Raise hands. Okay, um, it was, the question is I say rebirth. What tra- rebirth means something travels from one life to the next. What is that thing that travels? And as you just said, the mind travels. What about the per- mind with the imprints? And then, what about the person? Person travels? As you just said, no. The person doesn't travel. The mind travels. You're getting it? So then, I'm not saying that you are, what you said is wrong, right? I simply throw questions to see how much you can defend it. Okay. How many say that the person, the mind travels? N- not the person. Not the person. Okay. So now, the Indrajit is going to respond. Uh, Keshala, I'll try. Yes. Uh, Keshala, if I say a part of the person which was body and mind, and it was a combination which was, it is not exactly the sum of its parts. And uh, uh, so that traveled to the next life, but I cannot call the B exactly as the A, like which you gave that she was a girl. Yes. But <clears throat> the mind traveled, definitely mind traveled. That part is there, 
but the person which was a combination of the various factors uh, uh, say uh, all the five aggregates six elements and senses sense all the sense sources that didn't travel and that is why i cannot say that the why, person why why did it did not travel because they were all the five aggregates were disintegrated yes. to their own elements huh. they had their own disintegration no the person that person traveled or not that person didn't travel this person's Kishana. body did not travel 100% i agree with you yes. i agree with you i agree with you so i i do that not have traveled or not this is my no, question no because okay. i do not have exactly the same thing okay. which i had in the did you all hear what indrajit is saying yes. how many agree with indrajit ji How many don't agree with Indrajit ji? Or what about those people with half hands up? <laughs> Which angle is half half hands up? Not full, not down. <laughs> yes. Okay. So did you hear what Indrajit said? Exactly. He said whatever is there in the past life, the exact thing did not travel. This word exact. You getting it? Okay. Indrajit, where did you come from? Uh, from Patiala. Patiala, from Patiala to came here. Are you sure? Yes. So what traveled from from Patiala to here? Um, both my body and mind, energy traveled. Okay, the exact body and mind traveled or not? No. Not traveled. So which which means you did not travel? Uh, conventionally, so I her, can say her word. I'm using her word. Yes. Exact, you know. Yes, yes. Exact. You did not travel because exact was five days younger than who you are today. Yes. Your body was five days younger. Hmm. Your mind was five days younger, and you five days younger than before you start the journey, in comparison with what you are today. So you did not travel. No. You travel or you did not travel. Conventionally, I'll say you travel or not travel. Ah, uh, if I need to say conventionally, did get, yes. Did you get a travel ticket? Oh uh, yes. Did okay. you buy a travel ticket? I came by car. So <laughs> you, come, you came by your car, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> you came by your car? I'm sure. No. Yes. Conventionally, I came so, by car. So the what did you do before you get, get before you got into the car? What did you do? Okay, I I packed everything and I just moved. You packed. Mm-hmm. So that person who did the packing, mm-hmm. that person traveled. Yes. No, I'll, conventionally though I can say, but a lot has changed in the body and this the mind. This is my question. That person traveled or not traveled? That person, uh, I mean, okay, conventionally I'll say that person traveled, but exactly if I uh, look at this, then it is it was not that person. Okay, so that is so. Therefore, if that. for example for example say that person 10 years ago the person stole something mm-hmm. and discovered after 10 years so you cannot arrest the this person after 10 years or not i will arrest because again as part no, of he the he did not steal <laughs> why are you arresting him because convention because that, the one who stole mm-hmm. and one who is now 10 years later these were very different people I agree. I agree uh, uh, that I will hold that person only responsible and make that thing. But it is because the, for the conventionality, we have to uh, we say like this. But exactly, he is also he might have changed his mind. So what I'm saying. So whether changed mind, not changed mind, but that person did not steal, and you are blaming this person. This person was non-existent at that time. You're getting it. But still, uh, so conventionality. This, this contradicts with the conventional world. Yes. Any philosophy which contradicts with the conventional world is not a good philosophy. You're getting it. A philosophy is a good philosophy. You go deep at the same time does not does not contradict with the conventional world. That is good philosophy. So therefore, say if you contradict with many of these concepts, then the um, You're getting somewhere else. It doesn't help. Okay. Mike, 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 Mike. <clears throat> How do you define a person? <laughs> Question to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
a person is defined as an entity which is imputed on the basis of the of the person's the four or the five aggregates. Okay. And when the person is dying, his elements are left behind. Only the mind is traveling. So he is no more a of person. The, of the five aggregates, the mind travels. Yeah. So of the five aggregates. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying of the aggregates and the person. I'm saying of the five aggregates, the mind travels. Mind travels. Not the body. So can we say that the mind which is traveling is a person? Mind is not a person. Even now, your mind is not yeah. Jirji. So but you are there. Yeah. So so this person, my, this mind, mind travels, along the with person travels along huh? mind travels the person travels you're getting it of the five aggregates body does not travel yeah I agree with you yes but the mind travels and the person also travels so the mind and the person you are using it synonymously here. no 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 okay mm -hmm. Okay, tell me why the person is not traveling. I use you. Okay, listen, this is a very important discussion. You're getting it. This you have to discuss in your group discussions. What do you think? What makes you think the person is not traveling from one life to the next life? Uh, the person, I'm not talking the body. Body, yeah. we agree, it doesn't travel. You, I'm, My understanding when I re really say the person, it is the body and the mind together. Body and mind duality. Yeah. Yes. No, no, my, body and mind together. Together, yes. Yeah. yes. I as a person like this because I have a body, I have a mind. Yes. Yeah. So but that it, is? That is a person. That's a person. That is a person. When the, the body is left behind, when the body is left behind, yeah. it's not a person. He is only a mind. What it's is only, left is only the mind. So there's a person is not there. My he understanding, he is, it is not okay. there. So now look, if this is what you say, the body, the body and mind complex. So, Ajirji, you came from Delhi? You came from Delhi? Yeah. Were you there in Delhi? Yeah. Four days ago? Yeah. To a first airport? Before coming here, yeah. So, we're at the airport? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, was that Ajirji? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Today is Ajirji? Yeah. So, that one has a body and a mind? Yeah. And that mind traveled to this? Definitely. That body did not travel to this. Body also travel. That body is for, for this, the. That is right. Or younger. That is right. Right. So that young one is not. This one is five, four days older. That mm. body is different from your body today. It does not travel. We are, when we are talking this physical body as a such, I agree. But we are really talking at the time of the transmigration. No, that is okay. So the, if yeah. you can uh, respond to this question well, then the other will become very easy. All so, the body moments are different. You agree? That I agree. Okay. Yeah, the, mind so the, moments are different. The body is totally different. absent now. Yeah. That body is totally absent now. That's right. The body that you have yeah. now was not there then. That's right. So this body did not travel. Mm, yeah. So therefore, you, only your mind travels. No, the body also travels. And because the mind. The, the, that body is not to this body. To this body is not that body. I, I, I think uh, one is when we are really seeing from the physical uh, existence the way you are, the way it is, yes, there is a change. But I think when we are really talking of the transmigration, the way I really put it, when I die, my body goes away. It's when the mind, along with its imprint, it really goes, it travels. Okay, let's say, let's put it like this. Say, from Delhi to here, you have the body and the mind. Every moment, every day, the body was changing. That's right. I agree. So the first day, body, body and the body, mind also was changing. Yes, first yeah. day, body and second day, body is two different. That's right. So, likewise, say, when you're alive, you have a body. When you're in the intermediate state, you have a body. Yes, yes. You're getting it? You have a yes. body. Mm -hmm. So you have the body and you have a mind, both, even during yeah. the intermediate, after leaving this body. Mm -hmm. So you still the person is there during the intermediate state. You have the body and you have the mind. The body is a very subtle body, mm -hmm. intermediate body, and you have a mind. So the person is still there. So uh, the in, the, still in the bar, though, whatever the subtle level, so you are saying that is a person. 
Of course. Yeah, if it's a defined like that, yes, then I agree. So the point is that at the part of the state also you have the body and the mind. Mm -hmm. But what exactly is a person? This again is a question. It's yeah. a very important question. What exactly is a person? The body, mind, complex. Body, mind, together. Is that the person? To me, yes. Okay, are you just saying yes? Because at the time of the death, I mean, what is the birth? It's a coming together the body and the mind, the yes. consciousness. Yes. And what is death? It is a separation of the body and the mind. Yes. Okay, so what exactly is the person? This is a very serious question. You're getting it? If you say the body and the mind coming together, that is the, the person. Uh, how many of you have studied Acharya Chandragrita's text? Resents? Okay, say, the, say rejection of the seven modes to be the self. Oneness? Okay, we'll discuss this. This is something which we have to discuss. Oneness, differentness, dependent, dependent dependi, possession, possession, collection. So collection, the body mind collection together, collection is also not the self. You're getting it? Self exists, but not as the collection. If you identify the collection as the self, you are in a way looking for the objective self. Self exists, it doesn't exist objectively. You're getting it? Okay, this is a very important point uh, to be discussed. Okay, this be like, you have something to say? You raise the hand? Yes. No. We were talking about imprints. And so, for example, of uh, uh, a person who is an alcoholic in this lifetime. Yes. And he doesn't break the habit. Mm. So, through... Um, Next lifetime, he carries... So that is the mental tendency because this is what I was taking it forward. The mental tendency I was Very talking Very true. About. So he takes it forward we, in the next What are the habits, habitual tendencies that we have in this life? For example, like being alcoholic or being after cheesecake or being after Gucci or being after what? Any tendencies, for example, or being after study, so fond of study, learning, inquiring, then meditating. Next time you carry these imprints. You carry these imprints. For example, like Jesus Milarepa, the great saint who became enlightened within a single lifetime, he met with a young boy, a young shepherd boy. They met the teacher. And the young shepherd boy, he did not treat he did not treat Jesus Malaraba as a great teacher, great saint. He was just treating him as like another, you know, person. Then this boy asked many questions to Jesus Malaraba. And Jesus Malaraba, his refinement in his thinking, he could see that this boy is very special. Then this boy challenged Jesus Malaraba with many questions. And finally, Jesus Malarvi told him, okay, you do meditation. And Jesus Malarvi just gave a very simple meditation technique and asked him to go and do meditation. So this boy, a shepherd, he has all the free time. And then he went to the cave and he was meditating. Just look, he was meditating. And then they say the, the next day, the parents, whole family, they're worrying. Where is this boy? This boy did not turn up. And the family worrying, looking for this boy. Here, they nobody could find him. Finally, the, the next morning, the next morning, everybody, whole village, they were looking for this boy. Finally, they saw this boy in a cave, whole night in the cave. I said, then they said, hey, what are you doing? And he said, what? It's just a few moments that I'm here. Why are you bothering me? He said, no, you whole night you disappeared. He said, no, I'm just sitting here. So I came, sat here with this, this, with this man. He wouldn't say, teacher, with this man. Then he asked me to meditate, and I'm meditating. So just a few moments. And then the, from, the, the, from the, the, what? The, uh, the sun, direction of the sun, he could see that it's early morning. Yesterday it was evening. He was, what is this, the sun? 
it's just a few moments that it's here, now it's there. Right? Actually, it was like already 12 hours passed. He did not notice that. This is how the tendency of this poem, the tendencies, him karmic imprints that he he must have been great meditated in the past life. That he met with Jesus Maladipa, then he got the chance to reactivate these tendencies. So, whereas for us, if Jesus Maladipa asked us to meditate five minutes, then we'll drink water, and then we'll do like this. <laughs> And this and then sit like this, right? Sit like this, right? So, right? And then the, after then, then Jesus Miller, then you go to Jesus Miller, hey, bye bye now, <laughs> right? You will leave. But this boy, you know, he's very different. So he brought a very different tendencies, imprints from his past life. Okay, good. We'll quickly read one or two paragraphs, then we'll stop here. Lastly, fruit forms precisely according to the type of the, the seed planted. Therefore, it involves a continuity of similar type. This outer dependent arising to be seen in terms of five aspects. Similarly, inner dependent arising. Now, the, the beings, the sentient beings, how they come into being, but depends on the, uh, the causal dependent origination and the conditional dependent origination. Inner dependent arising also arises from two principles. From what two principles? From a causal relation and a conditional relation. What then? Is the causal relation in inner dependent arising? It starts with ignorance. Now, the 12 links of the dependent origin, if you have this by heart, then it's very easy for us. And then, not only that, here is going to be explained what exactly is ignorance, what is, what exactly is the, uh, the karma, what exactly is consciousness, so forth. What then is the causal relation of inner dependent arising? It starts with, with ignorance causing formations, how we how we came into existence in samsara is starting with the ignorance. Ignorance giving rise to formation, so forth that you know, so on, until finally birth, which is 11, giving rise to the 12th, aging and death. If ignorance does not arise, then formation or the karma, um, the karma does not manifest and so on, until finally, if birth, the 11th birth does not arise, then aging and death, the 12th, will not manifest. Likewise, from existence of ignorance, formations occur and so on, until finally, from existence of birth, comes aging and death. Ignorance does not think, again, same. Ignorance does not think that I'm creating the karma. No, ignorance is just one part of your mind. It was just part of your mind, and its job is just to blur the reality or distort the reality. That's it. It is nothing more that I, I should create karma. No. So where ignorance happens, then the karma is created automatically. Ignorance does not think I produce formations of karma. No, to formations think we are produced by ignorance and so on. Finally, birth, 11th birth, does not think I produce aging and death. No, the 12th, aging and death thinks that I'm produced by birth. Where there's a birth, aging happens, aging and death happens. Nevertheless, formations take form and arise from the existence of ignorance and so on and until finally aging and death takes form and arise from the existence of birth so in other words we the we need to really think of the the cause and effect cause and effect where the cause is there if it will invariably arise thus is causal relation in inner dependent arising to be seen how is the conditional relation in inner dependent arising to be seen what's the difference between the causal and the conditional just see to this um, as due to the coming together of the six elements, again same with respect to the outer dependent origination, the conditional dependent origination involves six elements. What are they? For the outer, earth, water, fire, air, space and season or time. Season or time with the outer dependent origination. Now the inner dependent origination, it says earth, water, fire, air space and consciousness conscious meaning your mind consciousness has many connotations conscious in the first place consciousness is the english word english word and that is borrowed by the various asian traditions asian traditions some who believe some who use the word consciousness to mean the self the person in buddhist context consciousness this word is borrowed to mean the mind not the self okay so this distance you have to know the, how is the conditional relation of inner dependent arising to be seen? As to the coming together of the six elements, as to the coming together of which six elements, namely, the conditional relation dependent arising is to be seen as due to the coming together of the elements of earth, 
water, fire, air, space, and consciousness. And some people translate air as wind. This is not really a good translation. Some people translate instead of air, wind. Wind has a connotation, for example, at the moment, is there wind in this in this hall? Is there air? Yes. Towards me, there's wind. Towards me, there's wind. Towards you, there's no wind. The air is there. You're getting it? So, wind has gone into something which is moving more forcefully, more evidently. So, wind is not really a good translation. Okay. Here, what is it? Now, look, the, these, each of these elements are being explained. Instead of just having a vague idea of what earth element is. Here, what is the earth element in the outer dependent origin also, the six elements explained. How that's explained there and how the six elements are going to be explained here, they are slightly different. You're getting it? It's not just the same. Here, what is the earth element in inner dependent arising? That which assembles to form the solitude of the body. When you are in the conceived mother's womb, when we are conceived in the mother's womb, say they say we have to say the parent substance they come together and then they have to meet meet and then they have to for example like say this where are what do you call this pouch pen pouch pen pouch and this table clock you know are put together they were not always together they just they'll go separate but Say the your bodily constituencies in the mother's womb. The day one you conceive in the mother's womb, the two parent substance, they they join very effectively, and all these the what is zygote, all all the, the the molecules involved, atoms involved, they come they become one entity. You're getting it, meaning that they create one entity, one unit. I would say not entity, one unit, one unit, and it stays as one unit, and then keeps growing. So, the objects which are involved there, this is known as the solidity, uh, that is given by, by the earth element. What is the earth element in inner dependent arising? That which assembles to form the solidity of the body is called the earth element. And then, what about the water? That which provides cohesion in the body is called the water element. For example, our body, same, our body, for example, the, 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 the dirt, the dust, add water to it, and then it becomes clay. They come together. There's cohesion there. They stick together. Like what's our body in the mother's womb? They stick together because of the water element. Then what that which digests whatever the body eats, drinks, chews, and tastes. So this is because of the body warmth, the fire element. And this fire element is not really discussed in the allopathic medicine. So in the Ayurveda, Tibetan medicine, Yunani. Sita, in this tradition, is the fire element. These four elements are being discussed greatly. Okay. <clears throat> that which performs the function of the body's inhalation and exhalation is the air. So, if possible, try to see the difference in a group discussion, see the difference how the four elements were explained. They are also explained in the outer dependent origination and in the inner dependent. These two are explained slightly different. And the, there's a reason there. That which, that which allows the body to have hollow spaces inside is called the a space element. For example, I breathe in and out. Because there should be space. If there's no space, my nose is blocked, then I cannot breathe. A space is there. That which produces okay. That which which produces the, the sprouts of the name and form, like reeds. Reeds means tall grass, tall grass in a sheaf, a bundle of the green stalks. The combination of the five collections of consciousness, the five senses, five sense consciousnesses, together with the defiled mental consciousness, five sense consciousness and mental together six, is called the consciousness element of the six elements, six consci consciousness. Consciousness here refers not to the person, but to the six, the aspects of the minds. Okay, without these conditions, the body cannot be born in the mother's womb. But when the inner earth element is not deficient, and likewise the elements of water, fire, air, space, and consciousness are not deficient, then from the coming together of all these factors, the body is formed. Okay, we'll stop here. Deata, oh, 
गते गते पार गते पार संगते बदि स्वाहा ओम गते गते पार गते पार संगते बदि स्वाहा ओम गते गते पार गते पार संगते बदि स्वा 